the goal here, when you have uh, identified all of the activities, you put them in order, and you estimated the durations of it, is that you will know how long your project will take. All right. So there's something called the critical path of a project. And the critical path is the path that's critical. Hmm? Amazing. Um, it's the path that doesn't have any flexibility. It is critical in the sense that you cannot delay any of these activities. You can finish sooner, no problem. Nobody will complain, but you cannot delay any of these activities. Let's take a look at this one schedule that I have here and look at how it's going to work. We have the start point here. This is the start and this is the finish on the far right. Okay. Um, from the start, you have three activities that will immediately start A, D and F. A is four, uh, four days, this is eight days, this is seven days. Mind you, they are not start to start. They're starting at the same time, okay? It's like in a, in a race when, you know, they shoot the gun and all the people racing, they start running. Nobody waits for the other, they all start running. I think that happens in real life. If you shoot a gun, people will start running. But I'm talking about a race. Um, they shoot, pop. Everybody starts running. So this is the same here. A, D, and F start running. Obviously, A finishes first because it's four days. This will finish last, which is eight days. So, you know, some activities will take longer than others because they have a longer duration. So if you look at this, you'll see that I have, um, if I want to connect the maze, assume this was a maze. Um, I'm, let me pick a color here yellow or golden. Um, I There are network paths that you see here. There's a path that goes like this from start to A to B. If you follow the arrow to C, that connects it all the way to finish. So there is this one path that goes from start to finish. There's another path in the bottom that goes like this to the finish line. But it doesn't mean they're really competing. It's just that all of them need to be done. If you look at the top path and you look at the bottom path, and if you add up the number of days, four and one, five and five is 10. This is seven and two is nine, nine and one is 10. Who will finish first between those working on A, B and C and those working on F, G and H? Who's gonna finish first? Can you take a guess? Because I'm thinking nobody will finish first. They will finish at the same time because the total number of days they have here is 10 days required and the total number of days required here is 10 days. So they will both finish at the same time. Um, the activity in the middle, the activities in the middle here, eight and three, they need 11 days. So if I put a team to work on D and E or the same person doing this and this, this person needs 11 days. So the others will finish first and then this guy will finish afterwards. They'll have one more day of work. Now, you'll notice there's also, so this is one path also. Okay, I'm just going to draw a line like this. Um, <clears throat> there's also one more path, and maybe for this one, I'll use a different color. It goes like this from start, goes to D. You see the arrow here, goes to C, and then they go to finish. You follow the arrows, and you see all the paths. Uh, this one in orange has eight days here has five days here. Those are 13 days that this person will need to finish both activities or whatever the team is. Um, see the arrow, it says that D has to finish before C can work, can be worked on. That, that means you can't run them at the same time. They have to run one after the other. So they will need 13 days. So technically, this 13 days is the longest back-to-back -back set of activities and that longest path that you see here uh, let me undo a lot of these drawings and let's use this. So the longest path that goes through the project is 13 days in this example. And we say the length of the critical path is 13 days, but the critical path itself is start D C finish. This is the path that is critical and cannot tolerate any delays. What happens if you have delays? What if this eight here was to become 10? 10 plus 5, 15, it's two days longer than what we had planned for because the original plan was, as you see, 8 and 5, 13. 
That's what you would have told your client, 13 days. What if I delay activity A? What if this, instead of four, is eight? What would happen? Well, if this was eight, then let me get my drawing tool or maybe my text tool. Um, so I'm going to make this. Right. I'm going to cross this out and then I'm going to make it eight. OK, when this is eight. Put another X on it so we can't see it anymore. Still can't exit out. Hmm. All right, so I X'd it out completely. All right, so that's eight days now. It delayed. It delayed extra four days. Eight plus one here. Uh, eight plus one, nine. Nine and five, 14. Hmm. That will blow the project because the project is meant for 13 days. By how many days? It ruined it by one day. Well, let's undo what I just drew. What if this, instead of taking four days, it took five days. What would be the effect? Well, I'm just going to cross out this four days and I'm just going to write five like that. OK, five days, five plus one, six plus five, 11. 11 days is not a problem because we had already planned for eight and five, 13 days. That's what we, prom we promised the client. So we say that activity A has a bit of flexibility. You know, there is a point where it can hurt the project, but before then, it is still okay. And that flexibility that it has is what we refer to as the float, the total float of an activity. <clears throat> How much float does it have? Well, if you look at the total these three activities need, they need 10 days, right? They need 10 days. And if you look at the longest set of activities, it is 13 days, right? And that means A, B, and C can handle a delay of up to three days and not affect the project because this was going to run for 13 days altogether. Mind you, activity C is common between them. And A and B here are five days, whereas D here is eight days. That means A and B can handle up to three days delay uh, which will bring them to eight, and they will really not affect the finish date of this project. This is called the total float. It's called the float, and I'm going to explain why we call it a total float. What if activity A, uh, instead of taking, so right now activity A, let me just ask you, how many days float does it have? We calculated, we said four plus one, five, five and five, 10, compared to the 13, which is the critical path, they have three days, right? What if this one did not take four days? It took six days. Hmm? So it took six days. That means it used two of the extra days that they could use, right? Those are the maximum three we said they can waste, right? And A just wasted two days here. That means the remainder of the activities, which in this case is this one, has the remainder of the original float. It was a total of three float that they, three days float. It used two days here, right? It used two of the days here. And so I have to subtract the two from that. I only have one day flexibility left. That means B cannot delay more than one day. If it delays more than one day, it will affect the project. See six here and one is seven and five is 12. There's only one day left before they touch 13. So the remaining one day is the remaining from the total float that A, B, C as a path has. C is common on both of them, but when we are looking at the path A, B, C here, when we look at this path, for this path, there's only three days total float that they have. If I look at the path, the other path that C is on, which is D, C, there is no float. So technically, C is an activity on its own that does not have any float whatsoever. C cannot be delayed. The three days total float that we said A, B, and C have really can only be wasted on A and B. C happens to also be on that critical path. C cannot delay by a single day. C, if it's delayed by one day, will become six, 
6 and 8 is 14, you just blew the project by one day. All right, so an activity shares a float with the rest of the ones on the path, but if you have a common one that sits on a critical path, it cannot be delayed, it has zero float. When, a, when an activity has zero float, it means it's critical, okay? D has zero float. So although D, E as a network path, together, collectively, D and E, they're 11 days, so we say they have two days float because we're comparing against the 13 for the critical path. The real uh, float really sits with E, does not sit with D because D is on the critical path, right? D, D here, I'm gonna give it a star. C, I'm gonna give it a star. These are critical path activities. They cannot be delayed. You have to watch for those. When you are a PM, that's your priority, that these activ activities do not get delayed. Obviously, there's more to it uh, in risk management and analyzing, like using simulations and so on. But, you know, from a surface value, these are the ones you really don't want to miss. Okay, so that's the concept of float. Uh, when you have float in an activity, it tells you that if something goes wrong, you know, up to a certain point, it's not really something to panic about. Um, but mind you, even if you are delaying and you're not affecting the project because you have float, you may be doing that delay at the cost. Maybe there's a contractor working on it and it's costing you more money. So you also have to look at the cost associated. But anyways, wanted to introduce the concept of critical path and float. Uh, 